Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to talk about using images in SugarCube. Now, I've picked SugarCube of the three different story formats because while you can use images in both Harlow and Snowman, SugarCube, at least at the time of this recording, gives you the most built in functionality. So, to start, let me just play the story I've put together here. So, across the three different story formats, Harlow, Snowman, and sugar cube. The easiest way to include an image is to use the image tag, the IMG tag. Now the reason for this is because in all of the different story formats, HTML is supported. So the image tag is just passed right through and nothing is done to it. For example here, I've got an image tag with its source set to the image image location.jpg. Now when it comes to the source attribute of image elements, they can either be absolute or relative. When I use absolute, I mean there's something in front of it, usually some type of protocol. For example, HTTP or file or even FTP. There's something absolutely defining where it's at. The relative positions have to do with putting a slash in front of it or a dot in front of it, or it refers from this current document to some other place in relation to, relative to, where the document currently is. So like in the same folder or a directory back or a directory ahead or some other place relative to where the document is. However, when you use the image tag in all three different story formats and in the examples I'm going to go over in SugarCube, at least with the online version of the editor, which I show in my examples, you're probably going to want to use the absolute position you'll have to use the HTTP colon slash slash something. You'll also need to find image hosting somewhere, which is a bit of a problem I know for some people figuring out what to use, what what's free, what's not free. I usually suggest Flickr for most cases, but Imagers is also a very good source. And you can even use Dropbox as well. If you set up your own Dropbox, you can do free image hosting that way. It's all kind of a pain, I know, but it's not something, at least as of the time of this recording, Twine 2 can do within their online editor. They can't currently host images because it opens them up to a number of uh, legal and, to a lesser degree, technical problems as well. So anyway, across the different formats, uh, you can use the image tag. That's the easiest way in Harlow, Snowman, SugarCube. Boom, you're done. You want images, you can use them that way. However, in SugarCube, things get a bit more interesting. So because SugarCube is based on the syntax of the earlier versions of Twine, images can be included using this special syntax right here. An opening bracket, IMG, and then within brackets, the location of that image. Now again, as I talked about in the previous passage, images are either absolutely positioned or relative positioning. This example right here is relative positioning because it doesn't have the HTTP or the file or FTP in front of it. But to include an image in SugarCube, if you're not going to use the image element or the image tag, you use this right here. You also be sure to take these spaces out because that's the only way I can have it show the code without actually running it. So opening bracket, IMG, the location of some image, and then two closing brackets. So when we use the special syntax, we can also, images can also become clickable objects. We can click on them to go places to do different things. So the example right here is using this syntax. It's the same one from above, the image syntax, creating both a link to a passage and having that link to the passage be the image itself. And we're using the link macro here. Remember, of course, if you're going to use this to take out all of these extra spaces. And, of course, do most definitely refer to the documentation on SugarCube because it's fantastic. Note, however, at the time of this writing and the time of this recording, and unlike many other areas in Twine, the image syntax cannot be used with variables. This position right here, this text, cannot be substituted at runtime. You cannot use a variable there. You have to supply the position, the whatever .jpg, .png, 
SVG, uh, whatever different image format you're using, it has to be supplied for every image usage you have within your story in Twine 2. That's just a current problem we have to deal with. The other thing to note, of course, is that the Twine editor does not and cannot check if the passage name used in macros, like link, like in this current example I have highlighted, actually exists. So it cannot check for you if passage name exists. However, if you run it and it doesn't, it will produce an error. So it's something just to keep track of. I know it catches me pretty often when I'm <laughs> using something like this. So just keep track of that. So as an example down here, I've used taken out the spaces and I've used the link macro with an image pointing to another passage. And I have an image right here that says, thank you for playing this video game. And I can click on it. So as a last example, we, images can also be used with other macros. I mean, I mentioned the link macro. There's also the choice macro. And as a third example here, the actions macro. So the actions macro within Sugarcube specifies a number of different things a user can do. Think of them as a set of actions. And it usually creates a bulleted list unless it's changed somehow via cascading style sheets. So as you can see in this above example, we have three different images, each one as a link to another passage, test one, test two, and test three. When I click on them, for example, if I click on test one, it sends me to the passage test one, and it's just a simple test passage, nothing special. Go back to image actions, and we see that link is now gone. The image, the actions macro, used with images or just text, gets reduced on whatever link was clicked. It works similar to choice, but I'm not going to cover that in this example, in that you can choose one within choice, or actions choose different actions to take. So I clicked on one, I'm going to now click on three. Oh, is that a... no, there's nothing here either. Let's go back to image actions, and we see now just two is left. Now this little <laughs> broken image thing that's displaying is because I didn't supply images for look and smell and taste. However, note these are all relative positioned to the current running document. And again, when you use the online editor, you're probably going to want to be probably going to be want to be using uh, words. Probably will want to use uh, absolute positioning. However, if you're using the Twine app on your desktop, you could probably definitely use the relative positioning for that. And so to close out this example, I'll click on two, and it's just another test passage. Go back to image actions, and there are more actions to take. So to close this up, let's look at the actual code within the editor. Now, as you can see, in that first example where I showed the image, I was just using the image and then the source attribute. So the source is pointing to something absolutely positioned. Notice the HTTPS. And this image uh, is from my feed and hosted on Flickr, so you see that as well. Then we went to images in Sugarcube. And then again, I mentioned this you can use, if you're using the image syntax using you can use it within macros like links and actions and choice so at the bottom here you see me using it within the link macro I have starting the link macro I have the image syntax double brackets around pointing to another passage so it creates a link to another passage using the image and that goes to image actions Notice, of course, that there is no link, there's no pointing arrow within the editor between images in Sugarcube and image actions, because it cannot and does not, as I mentioned, detect that. So we pull up image actions, and again, pretty straightforward. For the one, for the example I use, I just took out the spaces. So you take out the spaces to run it, and we have three different actions pointing to three different images that are themselves pointing to three different passages. And as we saw, test one, test two, and test three, all with their own links to the passage image actions. 
And so there you have it. An example of using images in Sugarcube. Again, all the different story formats, Harlow, Snowman, and Sugarcube, all support image usage. However, at least at the time of this recording, Sugarcube gives you the most functionality built in already. It's what I mentioned. Using the image syntax, you can use it in different macros already to create links that point to other passages, which isn't something, at least at the time of this recording, that is in Harlow. However, you can create it in Snowman, but you would have to write your own code, and that's problematic at the moment anyway. Thanks for watching.